Uh, hello, everybody. Um, wow, this is actually happening. Cool. Um, yeah, so I'm here to talk about uh, what I like to re refer to as frictionless development, or just generally speaking, reducing friction in, um, in your daily life as a developer. Um, a lot of people might, is that good? Uh, I think so. Um, a lot of people might refer to a talk like this uh, um, as being about uh, boosting efficiency and productivity, but I like to refer to it as reducing friction because what I like to really focus on is um, just making things easier to do. Um, making the things that you have to do probably hundreds of times a day just easier, like you know, taking a task that normally takes a second and turning it into a, a quarter second, like that stuff adds up and um, it, just, it, it just makes your life better. So as an exercise, I'd like you to imagine if you could no longer use keyboard shortcuts to undo if Command Z didn't work anymore and Command C didn't work anymore and you had to actually like use your mouse or trackpad and go up to the menu bar and click on the edit and find the thing, like it would be fine, you could still do your job, but it would just, it would be introducing so much friction and like this is the kind of thing you take for granted, like you use keyboard shortcuts for this and what I, I hope to share with you are some new ideas and some, some tools that I use and just tricks and hacks that um, if you adopt them can become as ingrained in your workflow and indispensable as using Command Z. So um, I just had to share this quote because uh, it really speaks to me. Um, we're not gonna talk about automation, but um, the same thing applies to uh, Im improving your workflows. Um, you know, it, it takes time to learn this stuff, to research it, and then it especially takes time to practice it to get it to the point where it's ingrained in your muscle memory to where it really benefits you. But um, I hope that I can save some of the time spent researching. Um, I hope I can just give this stuff to you for free and then it can be up to you to take a couple things and run with them. So this talk is gonna be um, super high level. I'm gonna try to cover a lot of territory and not go very deep into things. Um, and it's gonna be more about what to do, things you can do and not how you actually will do them or set these tools up. And it's gonna be kind of Mac centric because I'm a Mac user. Um, so I'm gonna talk about some, uh, some programs that are Mac only. Um, there are Windows equivalents out there. I don't know what they are. I don't wanna recommend anything that I don't use. There's also equivalents for Linux. Um, but this is more about ideas. So first up is um, shell aliases. Like what is an alias? The title of my talk, never type git status. I'm sure some of you gathered from the title of that talk that I was referring to aliases. Rather than typing git status, you can make an alias, gs, that when you type it, it expands out to git status, or at least under the hood it expands out. So some considerations to, ha to keep in mind when you're coming up with what you wanna make aliases for, or how to make aliases, you wanna keep them short, like one or two characters. You wanna make them easy to type, so, uh, or you wanna make them memorable, whatever works for your brain. Um, you wanna make them easy to type. Um, like one thing I do is like I'll, I'll like to have an alias that is one character and then an alternative version of that same kind of command but it's that same character repeated twice because that's just super easy to type. And a little bit goes a long way. Like if you, just, if you just set up a couple aliases and get used to them and start to use them on a regular basis, um, I think it'll start the ball rolling and it will, you'll see the benefits and wanna do more of this stuff. So some things that you might want to make aliases out of are common git commands. So I already mentioned git status. Git log is one I use all the time, so I just have to type gl. Uh, git branch, that also comes in really handy. I like to have a couple aliases for quickly ch switching to common branches. So I just have to type a couple characters to switch from mas back to master, back to develop. Um, and since I'm obsessive, uh, git is too long to type, so I've abbreviated that to g. Um, navigating and working with the file system is another good candidate for aliases. Um, so make an alias for your favorite flavor of ls. This is mine, I just have to type l. Um, and then make some aliases for common directories that you have to switch to all the time. So your projects, your work, your Dropbox, desktop, downloads, whatever, um, application support. And then um, you might know that cd dot dot takes you up a directory, but I like to just type dot dot. 
If you want to go up two directories, add another dot, three directories, add another dot. And this is a nice one. This just opens your current directory in your finder, so you can continue working with a GUI. Um, similar to the dot dot trick, uh, cd dash will take you back to your last used directory, but I like to just type dash. And the same thing goes for git checkout dash, which will switch you back to your previous branch, so I like to do git dash, or g dash. And then this is one of my favorite ones, creating an alias for your editor of choice, mine happens to be code, and then creating an alias to very quickly open up your current folder in that editor. And the nice thing about setting up an alias like this um, for your code editor is the fact that you can then e easily at any time change editors. So if you want to switch to Sublime or, God forbid, Adam, um, you can just change your alias and you can just continue typing the same thing. So next up is git aliases. Um, so git aliases are similar to shell, al shell aliases with the exception, or the, the difference is you have to type them after you've typed git, um, which sounds like more work, but the benefit of doing it, uh, of, of using git aliases is you get git's tab completion. So I would just suggest setting up a, a single uh, git alias for checkout, because seriously, like checkout is way too long of a word to type over and over, like all day long. So you can shorten that to CO and you'll still get your tab completions for branch names and tag names and, and uh, even like command flags and switches and things like that. Um, you should use a clipboard manager. So a clipboard manager is simply a program that runs and remembers everything that you've copied to the pasteboard. Because everybody's had instances where they had something on the pasteboard, they copied something else, they realize it's gone and maybe they can't even get it again. Like this eliminates that problem um, and you know, it'll basically copy or it'll remember pretty much everything or it's, depending on which one you use, um, you can customize like how long its memory is. But you can access things that you copied like hours or days or even weeks ago. It'll remember like what you pasted between restarts. I mean, it's like super handy. Like you can, and of course you can search it so you can easily find the things you're looking for. Um, like lack of clipboard managers is a reason I can't do anything on like an iPad because it drives me crazy. Um, you can also paste multiple things from your history all at the same time by just going through and selecting them. And I just learned this, I don't really know how useful this is, but you can actually change the order that they're pasted in by the order you selected them. So you can like go through your manager and be like, I want that thing first, and then I want that, and then I want this one down here. Select them all in that order, and then paste them in, and it'll paste them in in the order that you selected them. So Carabiner. Um, I learned about Carabiner years ago when I read a blog post about the hyperkey. Um, and what the hyperkey is, is a way to make your caps lock key useful. And I have to reference this blog post, which is from the guy who I originally learned this from. Um, and this is his updated version of how to make, how to actually set this up on your computer. So what is the hyperkey? Using Carabiner, I can now tap my caps lock key and it'll act like escape which is something you can do, which is something you probably should do, and you can just do that like in the Mac keyboard preferences. But the cool thing is if I hold down caps lock and then I start to type other characters, it acts like I'm holding down all of the keyboard modifiers at the same time, which I'll explain why that's cool in, in a minute. Um, well, right now, because I, I use this thing that I call hyper vim mode. Like if you know, if you use a vim, you know that you control the cursor with HJKL, which if you don't use Vim, you think that sounds stupid, why would you wanna do that? But if you do use it, you realize how much nicer it is to be able to like move the cursor around and like scroll through things by just keeping your hand on the home row and not having to like hunt down and find the arrow keys, especially on uh, the awful new MacBook keyboards. Um, so the way I have it set up is as long as I'm holding down caps lock, because in Carabiner, I have Command, Option, Control, Shift, and then H, J, K, L mapped to just act like you're tapping an arrow key. And because the, the caps lock key acts like Command, Option, Control, Shift all at the same time, I can just hold down caps lock with my pinky and anywhere I am in the system, no matter what I'm doing, I can like easily scroll through stuff and it's really nice. Another thing you can do with Carabiner is like you can, uh, you can get really creative with Carabiner. So one of the things that I've done is 
because sometimes I actually do want caps lock and the caps lock key doesn't work as a caps lock key anymore. I've set it up so that I can just like hit both shift keys at the same time and it toggles caps lock. And you can like really think, think outside the box with this stuff like, you know, um, tapping, just tapping like the shift key a couple times, like that can do something and it could do something different depending on which application you're in. Um, like just kind of drum your fingers on control option command, that could do something if you just tap those modifiers all in the, in the right sequence. So you can get like super creative with this stuff. And um, I think this is the last thing I'm gonna talk about, better touch tool. Like now that you've mapped your caps lock key to be a hyper key, you can set up global or app specific keyboard shortcuts. So what I have set up um, is keyboard shortcuts so that no matter what I'm doing, I can like, I can hold down caps lock and then tap A to go to my terminal or S to go to Safari or F to go to Finder. Um, I've got a bunch of these shortcuts hooked up on the left side of my keyboard um, so that I can do this all with one hand so I can very easily switch between all of my most commonly used apps um, and it's just a little bit quicker and less error prone than having to command tab through everything. And uh, the final thing I use better touch tool for is setting up trackpad gestures. Now generally speaking, you should be using your keyboard more than your mouse and trackpad, but it's still super nice for like casual use to, like the way I have it set up is I have these three, three finger swipes so that I can, if I'm in my code editor or my web browser or whatever, I can just swipe left, swipe right with three fingers and I can switch between the tabs I'm looking at. Um, and then I can swipe down three fingers to close that tab. And then I can just tap with four fingers and that acts like you hit command tab to switch you back to the last used app. So a couple suggestions or takeaways. If you're new to this, I would suggest just making a single alias. Um, and yeah, if you're new to this, you'll have to Google your shell and figure out how to actually do this. Um, on a related note, a really handy alias to set up is the one that opens up your file that contains all your aliases so that you can easily edit it and add new ones. And the second one is use a clipboard manager. Just find one, there's lots of them. You can find free ones um, and just have it running in the background and there will come a time when you'll be happy that you had it. Um, and that's all I had for you tonight.